Good afternoon, and thank you for being here today, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to introduce Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin III and Republic of Korea Minister of National Defense Kim Yong-hoon. The Secretary and the Minister will deliver opening remarks, and then we'll have time to take a few questions. Please note that I will moderate and call on journalists. And with that, Secretary Austin, over to you, sir. Thanks, Pat. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for being here. Minister Kim, let me again welcome you and your team to the Pentagon. It's our honor to host our allies in the Republic of Korea for our 56th Security Consultative Meeting. The SCM is the annual capstone event for the U.S. ROK Alliance. It brings our defense leaders together to tackle shared challenges and to deepen our friendship. For more than 70 years, our alliance has been the foundation of peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula. Our two proud democracies share a vision of a free and open Indo-Pacific. And we stand shoulder to shoulder against those who would upend the status quo. Now, we're closely tracking the unprecedented level of direct military cooperation between Russia and the DPRK. In our meetings today, we shared de our deep concerns about the deployment of DPRK troops to Russia. We also discuss how we're going to work together with our allies and partners to respond to this dangerous and destabilizing escalation. The evidence now suggests that North Korea has sent around 10,000 soldiers to train in eastern Russia. And some of these DPRK troops have already moved closer to Ukraine. And we're seeing them outfitted with Russian uniforms and provided with Russian equipment. And I am increasingly concerned that the Kremlin plans to use these North Korean soldiers to support Russia's combat operations in, in Russia's Kursk region near the border with Ukraine. And let me rem remind you that Russia signed onto the UN Security Council resolutions agreeing not to provide military assistance to North Korea. Of course, we know that Putin has gone tin cupping to get weapons from the DPRK and Iran. Turning to a pariah state like North Korea for troops just underscores how much trouble he is in. And we take this very seriously. We urge the Kremlin to change course. And we fully understand the security implications for both Europe and the Indo-Pacific. Putin will not prevail in Ukraine even with more help from North Korea. But these deeply concerning developments only underscore the importance of our alliance with the ROK and other allies and partners committed to shared security and prosperity. Now, Minister Kim and I had an outstanding meeting today. Our discussions moved the ball forward to modernize and deepen our alliance. That will help protect the security of the Korean Peninsula and shape the future of the Indo-Pacific. With, with a sense of urgency, we've delivered on the shared security objectives that we set forth just a year ago in a defense vision, vision of the U.S. ROK Alliance. The U.S. Department of Defense and the ROK Ministry of National Defense signed the Nuclear Consultative Group guidelines in July. And later that month, I traveled to Japan to join a, an historic trilateral ministerial meeting with the ROK and Japan. It was held in Tokyo for the first time, as envisioned by the 2023 Camp David Summit. Now, I assured Minister Kim today that the United States remains fully committed to the defense of the ROK. And our extended deterrence commitment remains ironclad. That commitment is backed by the full range of America's conventional missile defense nuclear and advanced non-nuclear capabilities. We've also returned to large-scale exercises with our ROK allies, and that's strengthening our combined readiness and our interoperability. We're also working together to tackle shared security challenges across the Indo-Pacific. So today, Minister Kim and I endorsed a framework to expand our cooperation throughout the region based on our shared values and common interests. We also discussed the important role of the United Nations Command, 
which reflects the international community's longstanding commitment to peace on the peninsula. And earlier this year, with support from the ROK, we accepted Germany as the 18th member state of the UNC. Moving forward, we'll build on our momentum and we'll expand the scope and scale of our cooperation. We'll use our strategic advantages and innovation in our defense, in, in our defense industrial bases to bring cutting edge tech to our warfighters. Now, our alliance has always been rooted in our shared commitment to act together. And the interests that brought us together seven decades ago have continued to grow stronger. Today's discussion again underscored our shared vision for this alliance's future. So Mr. Minister Kim, thanks for your leadership and your commitment to this proud alliance. We got a lot done today, and I look forward to doing even more tomorrow in the U.S. ROK 2 plus 2 with Secretary Blinken and Minister Cho. And thanks very much. And now let me turn it over to Minister Kim. Good afternoon. This is the Minister of National Defense of the Republic of Korea, Kim Yong-hyun. I find it highly meaningful to conduct my first overseas defense diplomatic engagements after my inauguration here at the Pentagon, the heart of safeguarding liberal democracy. Today at the SCM, Secretary Austin and I review the work of implementing the defense vision of the ROC-US alliance over the last year. In addition, we reaffirmed that the ROC-US alliance remains more robust than ever, even amid complex international security crisis. While asserting its theory of hostile two nations, North Korea continues to escalate tensions on the Korean Peninsula through detonation of sections of inter-Korean roads. In order to deter and respond to DPRK provocations and threats, Secretary Austin and I agreed to maintain an overwhelming combined defense posture and engage in close coordination and responses. In particular, we made it clear that DPRK's ongoing practice of sending filth and trash balloons constitutes a violation of the armistice agreement and called for an immediate cessation of this activity with one voice. Furthermore, we condemned in the strongest terms with a unified voice the unlawful military cooperation between North Korea and Russia which directly violates the rules-based order through the deployment of North Korean forces to Russia and arms trade and pledged to closely work with the international community. This July, the Defense Authorities of Korea and the United States completed the NCG Joint Guidelines through the Nuclear Consultative Group, thereby elevating the Rockies Alliance to an unequivocal nuclear-based alliance. Building on these guidelines, Secretary Austin and I will diligently pursue the NCG tasks in a substantive manner to enhance the execution capabilities of extended deterrence of ROC and U.S. as equal partners. Throughout this process, the ROC Strategic Command will be a key unit in the execution of the ROC-U.S. Conventional Nuclear Integration CNI operations. Secretary Austin reaffirmed the United States' unwavering commitment to providing extended deterrence to the Republic of Korea by utilizing the full range of its military capabilities. In addition, as tangible evidence of the U.S. commitment to the defense of the RRK, Secretary Austin reiterated that the frequency and intensity of U.S. strategic asset deployment would be increased and made regularized in accordance with President Biden's commitment in the Washington Declaration. The RK and the United States will further enhance, will continue to further enhance the alliance's capabilities and posture in response to the nuclear and missile threats through implementing combined exercises to reflect the North Korean nuclear threat. Secretary Austin and I agreed to strengthen security cooperation in the region based on the respective Indo-Pacific strategies of our two countries. The nuclear and missile threat from North Korea is now an existential threat 
threat not only to the RK but also to the Indo-Pacific region. We had a shared understanding that the RK US Japan Trilateral Security Cooperation Framework signed in this July represents a historic milestone in trilateral security cooperation. We will continue to further enhance it. In particular, we highly appreciated the achievements of Freedom Edge exercise, the first multi-domain training, and have decided to conduct a second training in the near future. In today's meeting, Secretary Austin and I approved the Regional Cooperation Framework for ROC-US Alliance contributions to security in the Indo-Pacific, demonstrating our commitment to cooperation both domestically and internationally. Based on the framework, we will expand substantive cooperation with ASEAN and Pacific Island nations, enhancing the level and burdening the scope of the RK US alliance. Secretary Austin and I pledged to strengthen cooperation in science and technology and defense industry based on the defense vision of the alliance. We plan to establish a vice minister level defense science and technology executive committee within this year to explore the application of cutting edge science and technology in the defense sector as well as cooperation on all cost pillar two. Furthermore, we acknowledge the significance of securing supply chain resilience and modernizing alliance capabilities and pledge to engage in active cooperation in the defense industry sector. In this regard, Secretary Austin welcomed ROC's participation in the US MRO pilot project and underscored the efforts to expand cooperation between our two countries. For more than 70 years, the ROC US alliance has overcome countless challenges, establishing itself as one of the world's most premier and exemplary alliances. Through the 56th Security Consultative Meeting, Secretary Austin and I reaffirmed our resolve to leap forward as a stronger alliance in response to uncertain future challenges. As the Minister of National Defense, I will work closely with Secretary Austin so that the ROC US alliance serves as a linchpin of peace and stability in the world, extending beyond the Korean Peninsula. I deeply appreciate Secretary Austin's active support for this successful meeting we had today. We go together. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Our first question will go to Phil Stewart, Reuters. <coughs> Okay. To Secretary Austin, how soon do you believe that North Korean soldiers may enter the fight against Ukrainian forces in Kursk? Are we talking days or weeks? And do you believe there's anything the international community can still do to stop that deployment? And to Minister Kim, does this deployment increase the risk of war on the Korean Peninsula? And does this change South Korea's willingness provide lethal direct aid to Ukraine? If not, why not? Well, Phil, um, as you heard me say in my opener, I'm sorry? I need to translate this first. Okay. <laughs> 네, 아, 먼저 첫 번째 질문은 오스틴 장관님께 드리겠습니다. <웃음> 지금 북한이 아, 우크라이나 지역까지 가서 전투에 실제 배치되고 크루스카 지역에 가, 가서 참전할 것으로 예상이 되는지 질문을 드립니다. 이것이 예상되신다면 며칠 내 또는 몇주 내로 보시는 건지 궁금하고 여전히 국제사회에서 이런 것이 현실화되지 않도록 막을 수 있는 그런 방안이 있으면 말씀해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 두 번째 질문은 김영현 장관님께 질문 드리도록 하겠습니다. 아, 이번에 아, 아, 북한군이 러우 전쟁에 참전하게 된다면 이것이 한국에서의 전쟁 아, 발, 가능, 발발 가능성을 더 증가시키는 것이라고 보시는지요? 아, 그리고 아, 러시, 러우 전쟁에 북한이 실제 참전한다고 한다면 한국이 우크라이나에 살상 무기를 직접 지원하실 그런 계획 또는 가능성이 있으신지요? 그렇지 않다라고 하신다면 그렇지 않으신 이유가 무엇인지 말씀해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. <clears throat> Phil, as you heard me say in my opener, we believe that uh, DPRK has sent some 10,000 uh, troops uh, into eastern Ukraine, and, and there they've been uh, drawing equipment and conducting some training. And some of those troops have uh, begun to make their way uh, towards the border uh, of Ukraine uh, in the Kursk uh, region. 
Uh, whether or not they'll be employed uh, in the fight is left to be seen yet, but uh, uh, certainly if they are employed, then that's uh, that very disturbing. And so we remain concerned that they're going to use these uh, troops in combat. I won't speculate on the timing of uh, employment. But again, this is something we're going to continue to watch, and we're going to continue to work with allies and partners to uh, uh, to discourage um, Russia from employing these troops in, in combat. Um, again, this is a, a violation of... Uh, of the UN security uh, uh, agreement, so um, this is uh, this is pretty serious. Uh, again, we're going to continue to watch it and continue to work uh, with our allies and partners to uh, uh, to discourage it. So, yeah. 제가 이미 개회사에서 말씀드린 것처럼 북한 병력 만명 가량이 러시아 동부 지역에 이미 배치가 되었고 이외에도 어, 여기에 더해 장비 또는 훈련이 제공되는 것으로 파악하고 있습니다. 그리고 이 병력 중에 일부가 러시아와 우크라이나 국경 지방 즉 쿠르스크 지역으로 들어간 것으로 파악하고 있습니다. 그들이 과연 실제 러우 전쟁에 참전할 것이냐 여부에 대해서는 지금 당장 어, 결론을 미리 말씀드리긴 어렵습니다. 하지만 참전한다고 한다면 이것은 매우 엄중한 상황이 될 것이라는 것이 분명하고 그래서 저희들이 매우 심각한 우려를 가지고 있습니다. 다만 이 참전의 시기가 언제가 될지를 미리 예단하고 추측하는 것은 별 도움이 되지 않는다고 생각하고 다만 저희들은 이러한 부분에 대해서 예의 주시하고 있으며 또한 앞으로도 계속해서 동맹 파트너들과 강력하게 협력해 나갈 것입니다. 이를 통해 러시아가 북한 병력이 실제 전장에 참여해서 참전하는 것을 단념할 수 있도록 계속해 저희들은 노력을 아끼지 않을 것입니다. 여러분 아시는 것처럼 아, 이러한 현재의 진행은 유엔 안보리 결의안을 위반하는 것으로서 저희들이 심각한 우려를 가지고 엄중하게 살펴보고 있습니다. 저희들 계속해서 예의 주시할 것이며 동맹과 파트너들과 함께 조처를 취해 나갈 것입니다. To be clear, um, there are violation of UN sanctions. Did you mean Eastern Ukraine? You said deployed Eastern Ukraine. I'm sorry. I thought you said deployed Eastern Ukraine. Yeah. Did Did you mean Eastern Ukraine or Eastern Russia that they had deployed to? They had deployed to Eastern Russia. And then they're, make, they're making their way west towards the U Ukrainian border. Sorry about that. 네, 아, 분명히 말씀드린다면 UN에서 어, 결정된 것 중에 위배되는 것 중에는 UN 제재와 관련된 안보리 결의 사항을 위배한 것이라는 점을 말씀을 드리고 제가 아까 말씀드렸던 것에 대해서 분명히 정정하자면 현재 만 명으로 추정되는 북한 병력은 러시아 동부 지역에 배치되어 있고 그 중에 일부가 러시아 서부 즉 우크라이나와의 국경 지역으로 이동하고 있는 것으로 파악하고 있습니다. Yeah, two I'd like to answer the question regarding the increase in the possibility of war breaking out on the Korean Peninsula following the North Korean troops deployment to Russia. 북한군의 러시아 파병으로 인한 한국 전쟁의 발발 가능성보다는 한반도의 안보 위협이 고조될 수 있다, 높아질 수 있다. 저는 그렇게 생각합니다. I do not necessarily believe that the North Korean troops deployment to Russia results in the changes in the possibility of war breaking out on the Korean Peninsula. However, I believe this can result in the escalation of the security threats on the Korean Peninsula. 왜냐하면 북한은 파병을 조건으로 해서 어, 러시아에게 그 첨단 군사 기술 지원을 요구할 가능성이 높습니다. This is because there is a high possibility that North Korea in exchange for their troops deployment would ask for cutting edge technology technology transfer. 예를 들어서 전술 핵무기 고도화라든지 어, ICBM 음, 미사일 고도화 아, 기술 그 다음에 또 어, 정찰 위성에 대한 기술 원자력 잠수함 만드는 기술 이런 어떤 첨단 과학 기술을 군사 기술을 요구하, 요구할 가능성이 높습니다. 
<clears throat> there's a high chance that they would, ex in exchange for their deployment, North Korea is very likely to ask for uh, technology transfers in diverse uh, areas, including the technologies relating to uh, tactical nuclear weapons, uh, technologies related to their advancement of ICBM, also those regarding reconnaissance satellite, and those regarding SSBNs as well. There is also a high chance that they will try to replace their equipments that have been um, taken a lot of time that so therefore all technologies or equipments. 이러한 것들이 한반도의 그 안보 위협을 증대시키고 불안정성을 높일 수 있는 요인이 될수 있다고 생각합니다. I believe such um, changes in the technological situation of North Korea can pose an uh, increase in the es uh, escalation of security threats on the Korean Peninsula. 하지만 지금 어, 러우 전쟁에서 우리가 보았듯이 러시아의 재래식 무기의 수준이 결코 그렇게 우리가 생각했던 것보다 위협적이지 못하다는 평가를 전문가들은 하고 있습니다. However, one thing to consider is that at we, as we have witnessed in the Russia-Ukraine war, the conventional weapon capability capabilities of Russia is not as formidable as we expected it to be. 러시아의 첨단 과학 군사 기술들이 에, 북한에 들어와서 어, 그들의 어떤 무기 체계를 고도화 시킨다 하더라도 우리가 음, 충분히 극복할 수 있는 어, 능력이 있고 특히 한미 동맹과 한미일 군사 협력 체계를 공고히 한다면 충분히 에, 극복 가능하다고 저는 생각합니다. Therefore, uh, even with the possibility of Russia's cutting-edge technology uh, flowing into North Korea and th thereby resulting in the advancement of North Korea's military technology, I believe it is possible for us to overcome such ch challenges based on our robust Rockus alliance and Rockus Japan trilateral secur security cooperation. Uh, and through this cooperation, I believe we can secure uh, enough and sufficient capability in order to overcome such security challenges. 결론적으로 전쟁 발발 가능성보다는 어, 한반도에 대한 안보 위협 그리고 불안정성이 다소 높아지긴 하겠지만 충분히 극복 가능하다고 저는 평가하고 있습니다. In short, uh, I would rather see the results or impacts of the deployment as an increase uh, that can result. I believe uh, the deployment can result in the security threats on the Korean Peninsula, and it could also have a destabilizing impact on the security of Korean Peninsula. But I don't believe it is going to be any changes in the possibility of war breaking out on the Korean Peninsula. Our next question will go to Ji Hoon Kim, Yonhap News Agency. Yonhap Kim Jeon. I want to ask a question to Kim Jeon. I want to ask a question to Kim Jeon. I want to ask a question to 그 한국 측이 그 한미 상호 방위 조약을 이행한 대표적 사례였다고 평가할 수 있습니다. 이번에도 추가로 미국의 포탄 부족분을 채워주는 방식으로 우크라이나를 우회 지원할 계획이 없을지 궁금하고요. 네, 그리고 또 북한의 오물 쓰레기 풍선에 대해서 현재 중단 촉구와 낙하 후 수거 방식 대응만 이루어지고 있습니다. 추가적인 대응 조치가 궁금합니다. 또이 마지막 질문은 두 장관님께 공통으로 드리겠습니다. 북한의 반인도적 범죄 그리고 각종 도발에 대해서 그 김정은에게 할 말이 있다면 부탁드리겠습니다. This is reporter Kim from Yonhap Agency, and I have first first I have a question to uh, directed to Minister Kim. Uh, last year's uh, munition deal between Korea's uh, cooperation and the United States is an exemplary case where you know, where Korea was able to provide support toward uh, United States in accordance with the mutual defense treaty and um, do you have any additional plans to give a um, support to indirect support to Ukraine by um, supplying and um, supplying munitions to United States in an indirect way and also there's another question about the trash and filth balloons uh, Korea has been uh, showing uh, consistently um, the kind of response um, Korea has been showing response such as collecting the trash balloons after they were dropped on the territory of Korean Peninsula or um, they have consistently asked uh, North Korea to cease the release of um, trash balloons do you have any additional measures in order to respond to such release of trash or um, filth balloons from North Korea? 
And this question, the last question, is directed to both Minister Kim and Secretary Austin. Uh, North Korea has consistently shown their anti-humanitarian provocations. Um, do you have any messages um, in mind that you can um, deliver to Kim Jong-un in North Korea? 우선 포탄 지원 관련한 질문에 대해서는 지금까지 어떠한 것도 결정된 바가 없다는 점을 말씀드립니다. 그 다음에 두 번째 질문 오물 쓰레기 풍선 살포와 관련, 관련해서는 오늘 어, 오스틴 장관님하고도 같이 의견을 같이 했지만 이것은 분명히 정전협정 위반임을 확인했고 이 정전협정 위반을 넘어서 우리 국민의 안전을 위협하는 도발 행위라고 저는 생각합니다. 하지만 우리 국민의 안전을 최우선 고려해서 어, 감시와 추적을 통해서 마지막까지 에, 낙하 지점까지 확인한 다음에 우리가 그 유해 물질 여부로 확인하고 수거하는 방법의 우리 국민의 안전을 확보하는 최선의 방법이라고 생각해서 그동안 그렇게 해 오고 있는데 지금 거의 그 선을 넘어가고 있습니다. 그래서 어, 다양한 방법으로 대응을 준비하고 있습니다. 그 다음 세 번째 질문은 에, 김정은에게 하고 싶은 얘기를 말씀하셨는데 맞나요? 네. <웃음> 북한군의 그 러시아 파병의 본질은 우크라이나 전쟁에 제3자가 개입하면서 확전에 대한 우려라고 생각합니다. 그래서 이 북한군이 파병됨으로써 우크라이나뿐만 아니라 유럽 모든 세계 국가들이 확전에 대한 우려를 하는 것이거든요. 그래서 지금 이게 북한의 파병은 어, 러시아의 불법적인 침략 행위에 야합하는 행위다. 저는 그렇게 생각합니다. 그래서 이 야합하는 행위뿐만 아니라 또 김정은이가 자기 자신의 국제 정권을 유지하기 위해서 자기 군대를 총알바지 용병으로 쓴 용병으로 보낸 것에 불과하다. 저는 그렇게 생각합니다. 이거야말로 반인륜적이고 반평화적이고 전쟁 범죄 행위 행위로 볼수 있다. 그렇기 때문에 이후에 어, 북한군의 그 파병으로 일, 일, 일어난 이후의 문제에 대한 모든 책임은 저는 김정은이한테 있다고 저는 생각합니다. 그래서 김정은이에게 할수 있는 얘기는 북한군 파병을 적각 철회할 것을 강력히 촉구합니다. So the first question about uh, munition supply to United States, I have to give you an answer that at the current moment, nothing is determined. And for your second question about Korea's response to North Korea's release of trash and filth balloons, um, today, in today's meeting, um, Secretary Austin and I have confirmed that um, the deployment of trash and filth balloons are a violation of armistice agreement. And as the release of trash and filth balloons is a provocation that poses a safety threat to our people. We have been um, using the response of first identifying and then tracking. And then after we found out the location of the dropping, and then we checked if there's any biological or chemical weapons in it. After we have gone through all the tests, then we collected those um, balloons. Um, these measures were taken under our assessment that this is the best and most optimal way of guaranteeing and um, confirming the safety of our people and that this is the way to protect our people in our best way. However, um, North Korea is crossing the line with various uh, methods of provocations and we are open to all alternative when it comes to the res when it comes to our response to North Korea's provocation. On your third question, uh, I recall it was uh, if I have any message um, toward um, that I have to Kim Jong-un. Um, so I believe the essence of North Korean troop deployment is the possibility of expansion of the war. And this results uh, from the intervention of the third party, which is North Korea. And such possibility is resulting in grave concerns of European countries, including Ukraine. And um, the deployment is uh, 
North Korea is joining the collusion of Russia's illegal aggression and invasion. And therefore, I, I see that the deployment is Kim Jong-un's attempt to maintain its dictatorship and Kim Jong-un doesn't, didn't hesitate to sell out its young people and troops as cannon father mercenaries. I believe such activities is a war crime that is not only anti-humanitarian, but also anti-peaceful. Therefore, uh, I would like to strongly uh, condemn uh, the activity of Kim Jong-un. And um, I believe all responsibility from the results of the deployment belong to Kim Jong-un. We call for Kim Jong-un's immediate withdrawal of his troops in our strongest terms. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I, I don't have any messages for the leadership of uh, DPRK. I call upon them to cease their potentially destabilizing uh, behavior in both uh, the Indo-Pacific region and now in, uh, in the European uh, theater as well. Uh, and like uh, my colleague here, uh, Minister Kim, uh, I call upon them to uh, withdraw their troops out of, uh, out of Russia. It does have the potential of lengthening the conflict or broadening the conflict uh, if, uh, if that continues. So. 예, 질문에 감사드립니다. 북한 최고위자에게 직접 개인적으로 전달할 메시지는 제가 따로 말하지 않겠습니다. 다만 북한의 현재의 행동이 인태 지역과 현재는 또 유럽 전국까지 퍼져서 매우 많은 불안을 야기하고 있기 때문에 이것을 즉각 중단할 것을 촉구하는 바입니다. 또김 장관님께서 말씀하신 것처럼 러시아에서 즉각 그들이 철수할 것을 요청합니다. 이러한 행위는 어, 현재 러우 전쟁의 기간을 더 장기화시키고 또 이런 분쟁이 더 넓은 지역으로 확대될 그런 잠재성과 우려를 가지고 있습니다. Our next question will go to Courtney QB, NBC. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary, you, you told Phil that you, the U.S. will continue to watch this deployment and work with allies to discourage it, but how specifically can the U.S. or the international community actually stop? Is there anything the U.S. can do? And you just said that um, that this does have the potential for broadening the conflict. Does that mean that you see the possibility that if, if in fact Russian troops are fighting alongside North Korean troops, that that means other countries could send troops, perhaps even to fight alongside the Ukrainians in an advisory level or a fighting or anything? And then just one more, this is my real question, those were follow-ups. Um, <laughs> my, my real question is just, uh, what happens when North Korean troops are killed by U.S. provided weapons? And then Minister Kim, um, um, do you see any signs that North Korea plans to interfere in the U.S. elections? We, your, your DIA said today that DPRK may be ready to launch uh, an ICBM, perhaps a nuclear weapon. Is there any indication that that could be, or other actions that they may be taking could be specifically to interfere with the U.S. election? Thank you. You only get one. <laughs> 아, 먼저 우리 어, 오스틴 장관님께 질문을 드리겠습니다. 지금 미국이 현재 어, 현재 그 어, 러시아와 북한 사이의 밀착에 대해서 예의 주시하고 계시고 동맹들과 밀접하게 협조하실 것이라고 말씀하셨는지 하셨는데요. 이것을 중단시키기 위한 구체적인 그런 방안을 가지고 계신지 이렇다면 무엇을 통해서 이 러시아와 북한의 밀착을 또 참전을 막을 수 있다라고 생각하시는지 말씀해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 그리고 아 북한이 러우 전쟁에 참전하게 되는 것은 현재의 러우 전쟁을 더 폭넓게 확대시키는 그런 잠재성을 가지고 있다라고 말씀하셨는데 이 말씀이 시사하는 바가 정확히 뭔지 좀 부연 설명해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 즉 러시아와 북한이 함께 참전해서 싸우게 될때 다른 국가들도 또 참전할 가능성이 있다라고 보시는지요. 특별히 우크라이나 쪽에 편을 들어서 우크라이나 전선에 참여할 그런 다른 국가가 있다라고 보시는 것인지 그게 궁금합니다. 그리고 아, 또 지금 또 드리고자 하는 또 우리 오스틴 장관님께 드리고자 하는 질문은 아, 미국이 지원한 무기가 북한군을 살상하는 그런 시점이 도달할 수 있다라고 보시는지 그렇다면 그것이 언제 현실화된다라고 보시는지 말씀해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 그리고 우리 김영현 장관님께는 질문 하나만 드리도록 하겠습니다. 
북한이 현재 미, 앞, 이제 다가온 미국 대선에 개입할 가능성과 정황을 파악하고 계시는지요. 최근에 있었던 그 한국정보당국 KDI의 그러한 예측에 따르면 북한이 대륙간 탄도미사일 즉 ICBM이라든가 핵실험을 강행할 그런 가능성 그리고 그 외에도 여러 가지 도발을 할 가능성이 있다라고 정보 예측을 하고 있는데 이런 활동들을 통해서 북한이 미국 대선에 개입하려는 시도를 할 개연성이 있다라고 보시는지 말씀해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. So Courtney, uh, the first of your 20 questions here was uh, whether or not we can stop the DPRK from sending troops. Um, we certainly can work with others to discourage this uh, this kind of behavior, uh, but I didn't, didn't didn't mean to imply that we can stop that. Uh, but certainly, their actions have consequences, as all actions have consequences, and they, we need to be mindful of that. Um, in terms of what could happen, you mentioned my reference to potentially broadening this conflict. Yes, it could encourage uh, uh, others to, uh, to, to take action, uh, different kinds of action. Uh, but I won't speculate on, on what could exactly happen, but we, there, there are a number of things that could happen. Um, and what happens when DPRK soldiers are killed uh, with U.S.-provided weapons? Well, if the DPRK soldiers are fighting alongside uh, Russian soldiers in this conflict and attacking um, Ukrainian soldiers, Ukrainian soldiers have the right to defend themselves, and they will do that um, with the weapons that we provided and others have provided. Uh, that's, that's to be expected. But if they are fighting alongside of, uh, of Russian soldiers, they are co-belligerents, and you have every reason to believe that those kinds of things will happen, that they will be uh, killed and wounded as a, as a result of battle. 예, 지금 우리 코트니 기자분께서 한 20가지나 되는 것처럼 굉장히 많은 질문을 주셨는데 그 중에 첫 번째 질문에 대해서 답변을 해보겠습니다. 즉 북한이 현재 러시아 아, 우크라이나 전쟁에 참여한 것을 중단시킬 수 있느냐 하는 질문이셨는데 저희들이 그런 목적을 위해서 계속해서 노력해야 하고 노력하는 것은 늘 가능하다고 라 생각합니다. 하지만 제가 단정적으로 그들을 이렇게 이렇게 해서 중단시킬 수 있다고 라 말씀드리지 않았다는 점을 다시 한번 환기시켜 드립니다. 그런데 분명한 것은 그들이 취한 이런 행동에는 반드시 결과가 따를 것이라는 것이고 그것은 모든 행동에는 다 결과가 따른다는 라 점을 참고해서 그들이 꼭이 부분을 유념해야 할 것입니다. 또 이러한 그 북한의 참전으로 통해서 어떤 일이 일어날 것인가에 대해서 제가 이런 전쟁과 충돌이 더 포괄적으로 폭넓어질 수 있다는 라 점에 대해서 추가 질문을 해주셨는데요. 지금 하신 추가 질문에 대한 내용이 맞습니다. 즉 다른 국가들이 현재 전쟁에 대해서 여러 조치를 취해서 참여할 수 있다고 라 봅니다. 그럼 구체적으로 어떤 국가가 어떤 조치를 취할 것인지에 대해서 추측하는 것은 별 도움이 되지 않는다라고 생각하는데 다만 여러 가지 조치들이 가능할 것이라는 점은 말씀드릴 수 있겠습니다. 또 이어진 질문은 바로 미국이 제공한 무기가 북한군을 살상한 데 사용되는 때가 언제고 이때는 어떤 시세점이 있느냐라는 그러한 내용을 질문해 주셨는데요. 아, 분명한 것은 러시아와 북한이 함께 어깨를 나란히 하고 우크라이나 병사를 공격한다라고 한다면 우크라이나 병사 입장에서는 당연히 자위권을 발동할 입장이 있고 그런 경우에 미국이 제공한 무기, 무기든 아니면 다른 우방 국가가 제공한 무기를 사용하게 될 것을 우리가 당연히 예측할 수가 있게 됩니다. 분명한 것은 현재 러시아 우크라, 우크라이나가 침공군으로 활동을 하고 있기 때문에 그들에게 반격을 취할 때 북한 병사도 마찬가지로 사상되거나 또 부상을 입을 확률이 분명히 존재합니다. <웃음> 네, 오스틴 장관님께는 20개를 질문하시고 저한테는 한 개만 해 주셔서 감사드립니다. Thank you for giving 20 questions to Secretary Austin but only one for me. <웃음> <웃음> 매우 행복합니다. <I'm> so happy. <웃음> 북한의 대선 개입 가능성에 대해서 질문하셨는데 결론적으로 말씀드리면 가능성은 높지 않다라고 답변드립니다. So on your question about the possibility that North Korea attempts to interfere with U.S.'s presidential election, uh, my short answer is that the possibility is not high. 대선 개입보다는 대선을 전후해서 자신들의 존재감을 가, 과시하기 위한 도발 가능성은 충분히 열려 있다. 저는 그렇게 생각합니다. Uh, I believe uh, 
there isn't a high chance of them attempting to uh, interfere with the election. However, I believe there is a high chance that they would want to exaggerate their existence around the season of U.S. presidential election before and after the election. 도발을 한다면 그 가능성은 ICBM을 발사하거나 또는 7차 핵실험 등이 예상됩니다. Um, the expected courses of action that North Korea could take uh, in their attempt to provoke could be uh, either uh, their launch of ICBM or their seventh nuclear tests. Thank you. Our final question will go to Ji Ho Yang, Cho Sun. This is reporter Yang from uh, Joseon Daily. First, I have a question uh, to Minister Kim. Um, the the op main opposition party of Republic of Korea has uh, expressed their opposition towards um, Korea's dispatch of analysis team and Korean delegation to Ukraine. So um, from your perspective, uh, Minister Kim, what do you think is the role that Korean military can play in Ukraine? And uh, I have another. I have a question to uh, Secretary Austin. So it is my understanding that uh, the current uh, assessment of the United States DOD is that North Korea did deploy troops uh, to Ukraine, uh, uh, to Russia. However, they were not involved in any combats at the moment. So, um, however, some are claiming that um, North Korean uh, troops that are are already being deployed. Uh, are being already are already being in uh, engagement. So, like, what would be your standard to determine whether um, the participation of these North Korean troops will be deployment or actual participation in combat operations? And also, um, you have uh, USDOD has also uh, made a statement that um, the North Korean troops who are in Russia will also be um, classified as enemies that can be attacked by. Nor uh, by U.S. Uh, weapons that are supplied to Ukraine. So um, could you uh, give a little more elaboration on this statement? This concludes my question. Ukraine has been a monitoring of the Ukraine and the monitoring of the Ukraine. 이라크 전을 비롯해 가지고 각종 그 전쟁 시에 참관단이나 전황 분석단 이런 것들을 쭉 보내 왔습니다. So uh, I recall the question was about our observers and monitoring teams uh, of Korea that are that are and could be sent to Ukraine. So uh, uh, throughout the history in uh, many different wars including the Iraq war um, there have been many cases where we have sent uh, monitoring teams or uh, lesson learned analysis team to the countries that are currently that war in war 그 전황 분석단이나 참관단이 이렇게 가서 하는 역할은 그그 현대전의 그 추세 그리고 전쟁 양상 이런 것들을 분석을 하고 특히 우크라이나 전 같은 경우는 북한군이 참전을 하기 때문에 북한군의 전투 동향 이런 것들을 잘 분석을 해서 향후 우리 군에 유용한 정보로 활용할 수가 있습니다. 
um, the role of such observers or analysis team play uh, in the war is uh, mainly analysis of the trends of the modern warfare or different aspects of moder modern warfare. And especially as um, we have confirmed North Korean troops were deployed to Russia, I believe it could serve as a great, great opportunity for our analysis team or observer to learn um, the movements or trends of the North Korean troops. 그 새로운 다양한 무기 체계들도 어, 등장을 하고 있고 어, 현대전에 맞는 전술 이런 것들도 굉장히 그, 어, 중요하게 그 드러나고 있습니다. 이런 것들을 우리가 잘 수집을 해서 향후 우리 국가 안보에 우리가 유용하게 활용을 한다 그러면 보다 우리 국민의 안전을 지키는데 큰 도움이 될 것으로 생각합니다. Um. In many uh, wars, uh, there uh, we have witnessed many new and diverse weapon systems uh, continuously popping up, and also we were able to witness many different modern um, tactics in the war. Uh, I believe if we can um, collect such information uh, diligently and then utilize it for our future um, safety of and stability of our country, I believe it, it can serve as an opportunity for us to provide better uh, protection toward um, the people of Republic of Korea. 그래서 우크라이나 전에 참관단을 보낸다든지 무슨 그 전황 분석단을 보내는 것은 어, 당연한 우리 군의 임무라고 저는 생각합니다. 만약에 그렇게 하지 않는다면 그거야말로 잘못된 것이고 직무 유기라고 생각합니다. I believe it is an obvious task that our military should play. Uh, to send uh, observers and analysis team to the Russia-Ukraine war. And I, I would even say that if we don't send our observers or analysis team, it would mean that we are not faith faithfully doing our jobs. So thank you for your question. Um, as I understand it, the first question was, <coughs> what, was our, what is our standard for determining whether or not um, you, the DPRK troops are actually fighting or in the fight. And the second question was whether or not they can be engaged with uh, U.S. weapons. If, so I, I think standard's pretty, pretty easy. Uh, if they're fighting, if they're attacking uh, Ukrainian soldiers, then they're, they are co-belligerents. They're a part of this fight. That's, uh, that's, that's fairly easy to determine. Um, and it, it's not certain that they will be introduced into uh, this fight, but, uh, but clearly uh, 10,000 soldiers, and some of them are moving west towards uh, the Ukrainian border, then there's a good likelihood that they will be employed. Um, but we'll see. We won't speculate. We'll, we'll c collect evidence. But um, they're doing this because Putin has lost a lot of troops, a lot of troops. And, you know, he has a choice of either getting other people to help him or he can mobilize. And he doesn't want to mobilize because then the people in Russia will begin to understand the extent of his losses, of their losses. So there's a good likelihood that these troops will be uh, introduced into combat, not certain, but I think the likelihood is pretty high. But this is not a, si a sign of strength, it's a sign of weakness. Putin has not achieved one strategic objective in two and a half years against a, a force that was far inferior to, to his force. That's a sign of weakness. Again, he's gone to other countries for weapons and munitions, and now he's going to other countries for people. And as I said earlier, uh, if they are fighting and they're co-belligerents, they're attacking Ukrainian troops, then the Ukrainian troops have the right to defend themselves, and we have every expectation that they will. They'll use their own weapons. They'll, they'll use the weapons that they've been provided, and, you know, that, that won't be a surprise to anyone. But this doesn't have to happen. Putin can end this war today. It was his choice to launch this war. He's not achieved his objectives. He can end this war, and he should end this war. 
otherwise, we'll see a lot more losses uh, on both sides, and that's really highly unnecessary. But I think uh, in terms of our standards for determining whether or not you know they're, they're fighting, they're in the fight, I think it'll be pretty, pretty easy to, to determine that. Okay. 네, <웃음> 질문 감사드립니다. 두 가지 질문으로 제가 요약해 보겠습니다. 첫 번째는 북한이 실제 아, 파병을 넘어 참전까지 했는지를 판명하는 기준이 뭔가 하는 질문이셨고, 두 번째는 아, 이런 참전하게 된 아, 북한 병사에 대해서 미국 무기로 우크라이나 병사가 관여하게 될, 즉 교전하게 될 가능성에 대해서 질문을 해주신 것으로 파악합니다. 첫 번째 질문에 먼저 답변을 드리겠습니다. 참전 여부를 판별하는 기준은 매우 용이하다고 생각합니다. 아, 그들이 아, 러시아와 러시아 군사와 함께 싸우고 공격하면서 우크라이나 병사에게 공격을 가하면 그들은 함께 러시아와 침공한 세력이 되는 것이고 이것을 통해 그들이 참전했다는 것이 쉽게 결정되게 될 것입니다. 그런데 현재 파병된 북한군 병사들이 다 그럼 참전할 것인지 그것은 예단할 수 없습니다. 다만 만 명이나 되는 사람들이 이미 러시아에 들어갔고 그 중에 일부가 우크라이나 국경까지 이동했다면 참전 가능성은 상식적으로 상당히 높다라고 볼수 있다고 봅니다. 근데 이것을 갖고 예단하진 않고 저희들이 예의주시하면서 증거를 파악하도록 하겠습니다. 근데 이와 관련해서 분명히 말씀드린 것은 북한이 이렇게 파병하게 된 배경에는 바로 푸틴이 러시아 병사들 많은 병력을 이미 상당히 잃었기 때문이다라는 점입니다. 이것에 대한 푸틴의 대안은 두 개였을 텐데요. 하나는 자국 국민들을 모병 모집하는 거나 아니면 외국군 외국으로부터 그렇게 도움을 받아 참전을 받는 부분이 있었을 텐데 첫 번째 모병안은 그렇게 어려웠던 것이 이것을 모병하게 되면 러시아 국민들의 저항이 있을 것이고 또 하나는 현재 러시아 군이 많이 고전하고 있다는 것을 인정하는 것이 되기 때문에 그것을 많이 꺼리는 것으로 파악이 됩니다. 그래서 현재 이렇게 파병된 그런 군사들이 참전까지 들어갈 가능성은 여전히 높다라고 저희들은 파악하고 있는데요. 그런데 이런 현재 상황은 러시아의 강점을 보여주는 것이 아니라 약점을 보여주고 있다는 점을 제가 적시하기 바랍니다. 즉 지난 2년 반 동안 전쟁이 진행됐지만 푸틴은 러시아보다 훨씬 약한 우크라이나 군을 상대로 그 어떤 전략적 목표도 하나도 달성한 바가 없습니다. 그게 안 되는 상황에서 다른 국가로부터 탄약과 무기를 공급받다가 이제는 병력까지 공급을 받는 상황이 된 것입니다. 앞서서 또두 번째 질문해 주신 내용 바로 그 참전 여부에 대해서는 바로 우크라이나 병사에게 북한 병사가 공격하는 것이 들어가면 그것이 바로 어 이제 참전하는 것이 될 것이고 이 상황에서 우크라이나 병사는 당연히 자위권을 발동할 권리가 있으며 그렇게 자기를 지키기 위해서 무기를 사용할 것으로 예상되는 바입니다. 이런 상황에서 그 병사가 가지고 있는 무기를 사용할 것이고 그 무기가 미국이 제공한 것이든 어떤 것이든 사용하게 될 것이고 그런 결과는 놀라운 것이 아닐 것입니다. 하지만 그런 결과가 그렇다고 해서 꼭 일어나야만 하는 것은 아닙니다. 일어나지 않아도 되는 것이죠. 바로 푸틴 대통령이 오늘 즉시 전쟁을 중단하면 되는 것입니다. 전쟁을 개전한 즉 전쟁을 시작한 자도 푸틴이었고 전쟁을 지금까지 이끌어온 사람도 푸틴이었습니다. 그리고 종전의 열쇠도 푸틴 대통령이 쥐고 있습니다. 그가 오늘 당장 종전하지 않는다면 양측에 너무도 많은 불가피한 손실이 그리고 사상자가 발생할 것인데 이것은 우리가 피할 수 있는 것이고 전혀 불필요하다는 점을 말씀을 드리겠습니다. 감사합니다. Secretary Austin, Minister Kim, thank you both gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have available today. This concludes our press briefing. Thank you.